Chapter 7. When I arrived back in Obasama's house on Saturday, silence greeted me just like it had every day I returned home from school. I opened the sliding door that led to the hallway outside the kitchen and slipped off my shoes. Tadaima! I called out to let her know I was back. I stepped inside and set down my Rondosuru backpack. After a few seconds, Obasama called out, Akari Sinai from the garden. Welcome back. That's where she was when I left this morning. Was she out there the whole time? Obasama poked her head inside. Have some snack, she said. I'll be in soon. I saw, I sat at the tiny dining table by myself. Again, several soy flavored senbai rice crackers wrapped in crispy black nori seaweed and a few pale orange loquats were set on a separate place for me. I never saw loquats at home. I carefully peeled one and its skin came off in four even strips. It was like a cross between a plum and an apricot. Juicy and tart and sweet, all at the same time. Tick, tock, tick. Obasama's old wind-up clock counted time from across the room. Tick, tock, tick. The house was so quiet. The steady rhythm boomed in the silence. My afternoons had been like this all week. Since school was only half a day on Saturday, the afternoon would be even longer. Obasama opened the door from the garden with a rattle. Um, I cleared my throat. Thank you for the snack. Obasama looked surprised, almost as if she'd forgotten she prepared it for me. You're welcome. She unwound her scarf and removed her hat. What else? What should we talk about? Since it was Saturday, there was no buzz and hustle of businessmen making their way to and from work. It was really quiet today. Flick. My grandmother turned on the TV. I love TV. The first thing I used to do after school back home was turn on the TV. Watch reruns of my favorite sitcoms. Not here, though. After all, this wasn't my house, so it felt weird to turn on the television and search for shows of my own. I mean, I was a guest, and what kind of guest does that? So I turned my chair to watch whatever was on. Maybe it would be cartoons, since it was Saturday? Saturday cartoons were the best part of weekends back home. Obasama sat in front of the TV and stretched to reach her toes. These were her radio exercises, though they were nowhere near as crazy as the ones my dad did. I crunched the salty senbai quietly so I wouldn't disturb Obasama watching her show. I watched it too, but uh, it was just old people, you know, people over 30, talking about, I don't even know, something, something boring that I didn't understand. That would have made mom mad to know, but I wasn't about to tell her or Obasama. Even when I did understand, I was bored. I watched and crunched, crunched and watched. Sadly, there were no cartoons. We sat through a news program and then a cooking show. When the program ended, I realized I had been with Obasama for a whole week, and I had no idea what she did while I was at school. Um, what did you do today? I asked. Me, Obasama answered, surprised again. I worked on the apartments. Obasama had a few rooms on the other side of the house that she rented to university students. Since there were separate entrances for the apartments, I had only seen one of her tenants so far. Oh, I didn't know what else to say. Obasama turned off the TV, so now it was really quiet. Tick, tock, tick. The school week sped by, but time seemed to slow to a crawl this Saturday afternoon. Clank, I turned my head toward the outside. I wonder if that's the mail, began my grandmother. I jumped up and dashed out back barely getting my shoes on as I tumbled out to the mailbox. I'd been in Japan for more than a week and still no letters. I checked every day, but still no letters. I reached the mailbox just as the mailman was leaving, and I quickly reached in. And today, 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 there was a letter. It was from home. Obasama wasn't around when I ran back in, so I dug around in a kitchen drawer for a letter opener. Nothing in that drawer, so I opened another. I spotted my grandmother's hefty cleaver on the cutting board by the sink and briefly considered using that to chop open my letter. I was that impatient. Finally, I found the letter opener in the third drawer I rifled through. At that moment, Obasama appeared from the bedroom wearing, holy moly, my jaw dropped. Obasama had changed from her usual outfit of loose-fitting trousers and a long-sleeved blouse to a yellow and black tiger print dress. The swirl of black stripes over the vibrant yellow background wilder than anything I'd ever seen any old lady wear. As she adjusted the birdcage netting of the tiny hat perched on her head, her large gold rings glinted at me. One was a huge dark purple amethyst as big and round as an eyeball. What do you think? 
I was too distracted by another ring she wore to answer. It looked like the, something Wonder Woman might have, a deep yellow gold zigzag that looked like it, it could repel lasers. So many ladies compliment me when I wear this dress, Ovasama continued. In Japan, the older a woman gets, the more boring her clothes get. Blacks, browns, grays, like dull little sparrows. Bah, no one gives them a second chance. I think the older the woman, the fancier she needs to dress. The more eye-catching her jewelry should be. I might not have my youth, but at least I can make up for that with style. I wasn't a fan of her tiger dress, and her accessories felt a bit over the top. But her logic did make some sense. I have to buy some chicken for dinner, Obasama stepped outside. She dragged a small shopping bag with wheels behind her. I'll be back soon. She ambled down the street, and sure enough, people definitely gave her a glance. A second glance, sometimes even a third. As soon as she closed the gate behind her, I turned my attention back to my aerogram, which was a special type of letter sent from overseas. Since postage was more expensive depending on how much mail weighed, aerograms only cost 30 cents to send since they were made out of whisper-thin paper. I sliced open the edges with the letter opener, careful not to rip anything because I didn't want to lose even one word. I unfolded the pale blue paper to reveal one and a quarter pages of connection with my family. It was my sister Aya's handwriting. Dear love, cutest, sweetest Waka, Mommy wanted me to write to you about the presents you're supposed to give the people, the ones with names, give to the people whose names are on them. The boxes of chocolate without names on them, give to the people around the neighborhood who help you the most. If you don't know who, ask your grandmother's advice. You can give the jello to grandma or you can use it yourself. You can do whatever you want with the Pop-Tarts and the Pepperidge Farm cookies. If you need anything, write a letter and don't call us, we'll call you. Joke, ha ha. And if you absolutely have to call, call station to station and not person to person. Since you're gone, nobody can go on a trip, so we're all suffering. You're an adult, so everything, so do everything you can and don't bother grandma too much. Be nice to her. Mommy will give you thousands of kisses when you come home. Mommy dictated this letter. Love, XXX, Mommy. On the back, my sister and mother left room for my five-year-old little brother to include his own message to me, a picture of my classmate, Eric. Although I never, ever told my siblings I had a crush on Eric, which I no longer did because he was actually a dope, they still thought I did, and they didn't let me forget it. Hmm. Not the most satisfying letter ever. I mean, really, Mom? I knew to give the gifts with names to those people, but who cares? It was a letter. I read it again and again and again. By the third time I read it, I appreciated the drawing Taiga included. It was a pretty good drawing for a five-year-old. It actually kind of looked like Eric, too. Then a feeling, almost like a fog, a fog of missing, settled over me. All of a sudden, I missed my mommy. I missed my daddy. I missed my sister, my baby brother, even my older brother. Stop. I took a deep breath and let all the air out slowly. Stop. I wanted more letters, more and more letters. How could I get them? I could write. I sat down at the little dining table and composed a letter to my parents, but I ended up crumpling it up and throwing, throwing it away. The Japanese I included was messy, and even though I used a plastic eraser to correct it, the end result was sloppy. So I wrote the Japanese parts on a separate sheet of scratch paper before I started an, another draft. Dear Okasama Otosama, Thank you for the letter. How is Kansas? Japan is fine. I paused here. What else would my parents want to hear about? I didn't want them to think life was easy for me here. I don't sleep in like I would at home since I have school every day, even Saturday. Around seven. Every morning this past week, I woke up, got dressed, folded my sheets, blanket, and futon, and put them away. A couple of days, I woke up even earlier because of Obasama's 5.30 a.m. English lessons on the radio. On the other hand, I didn't want to complain too much. Babasama is fine. She's not that bad. She makes me food every day. She even grilled shishamo for breakfast. It was really good. The shishamo were fat with their eggs, and since I'm allergic to chicken eggs, it was nice to be able to eat fish eggs. I ate it with grated daikon and left only the heads. Even the tails were crispy and delicious. All that grilling and grating seemed a lot of work, though. I don't want to be any trouble, so I told her I could make my own breakfast. The past couple of mornings, I toasted a roll with cheese on it instead. I walk to school with Reiko, and during morning assembling, all the students do Rajio Taiso exercises, just like Daddy. Although they're a little different from the ones Daddy does. Maybe they have changed over the years? 
My teacher is so nice. Nice to me, anyway. He can be more strict with the other students, though. My classes are hard. In language arts, the lesson we're on is tanka to haiku. I paused again, wondering if I should let my parents know that when I first opened my textbook, the title tanka and haiku looked like this to me. Only one of the two letters I could read was written in hiragana, the letters most five-year-olds can read. The other three characters were one of the 750 plus kanji characters I hadn't learned yet. The one kanji I read was part of my name, the ka part of waka, so that was the only reason I knew that one already. If my parents were aware of just exactly how little I could read, would they make me go to even more school? No way would I chance that. I wrote the kanji five times on my piece of scratch paper before including it in my letter. I actually learned about haiku in Kansas, but I didn't know what tanka were before. Waka was part of the lesson too, so that was interesting. Of course, I already knew waka was a type of poem. We also went to the school library and I checked out a book. We went to the library all the time during summers back home. My mom brought a box with my sister's brothers. <clears throat> my mom brought a box and my sister's brothers and I loaded it up until it was so full we could barely carry it. Should I confess I couldn't read the one book I checked out here? I could read the books in the first and second grade section. But since I was a sixth grader, I knew my parents wouldn't exactly be proud of me for that. I had decided to leave out those details. Now to end the letter with a healthy, do healthy dose of guilt. I have been trying very hard to be good and not a burden to a basama. I make sure to wash my own clothes every night before I get in the deep ofuro tub. Sometimes I get cold because it takes a while to clean clothes by scrubbing them on a washboard. But then... It is nice to soak in the hot bath. I miss you and Kit Kats, Twix bars, and English books. I am almost finished with the ones I brought since there are no TV shows I like here. I reread the letter. Perfect. Just the right combination of I'm trying my best to learn and enjoy myself, what a good child I am, and how could you do this to me? Waka, it's dinner time, called Obasama from inside the kitchen. I looked up. The rest of the afternoon had sped by in the blink of an eye. When did my grandmother return? I hadn't even heard the door open, let alone her preparing dinner. I cleared the table off as quickly as I could to make room for the ginger chicken I could smell sizzling in the kitchen.